Flower and Moxie, and I've got Callie and Jess today. Both are very much professional florists. They've been in floristry for over 10 years, and we're going to work together to build this incredible uh, mantle. So this tutorial is going to have a lot in it because there are so many different ways to do a mantle. You can keep it more traditional and just do a runner all the way across, similar to this one. Um, you can just do a dramatic one on one side and load down some candles and some greenery. But what we're going to do for this tutorial is Jess is going to create something more dramatic on my right side. Uh, she's going to have it spilling off. We're bringing in some foraged spring branches because it's March. And she's going to be using a foam, uh, foam cage. Now, alternatively, if you want to stay away from foam, you can use a Lomi bowl and this is an ocean pouch. So this is completely, uh, you can compost this. It's 100% biodegradable. You can find it on, I believe, New Age Floristry. Uh, these run about six to seven dollars a piece and you soak them in water and they swell up and they retain moisture really well. So I've just used them for the first time today. I was really pleased. And so they're a little bit more expensive, but I think worth it. And then we have this uh, nine or 12 inch uh, Lomi, Lomi dish, which is a designer bowl. And of course, as always, you wanna tape in your mechanics. And then this is something that Callie made for another video. Um, it was a runner, and the reason why we have it is because I want to show you how you can repurpose it. So let's say that you're having your ceremony in front of this mantle, but then your reception's in another room. You can lift this off and put it in front of the sweetheart table. You can take down these pieces and move them in front of the cake table. So I'm always uh, just trying to give ideas and encourage to repurpose those flowers and to bring it you know, throughout your reception. So this mantle I snagged this past week on Facebook Marketplace for 150 bucks uh, because I couldn't find one to rent. And that's a really good idea if you are getting married in a space that just has like a lot of blank walls and maybe you don't want to bring an arch into an indoor space. Um, you can easily find fireplace mantles on Facebook. Um, this one, you know, it pro I needed to probably build some other things onto it to make it stand on its own. As it is, we kind of had to lean it up. Um, but for a wedding, of course, you'd make, you would want to make sure it's more structurally sound. But you can paint it any color you want and then build your florals off of that. And if you are getting married in the same room, just roll with it. <laughs> if you are getting married in the same room, after your ceremony, you can always move your cake table in front of the mantle or your sweetheart table so you don't have to move any of the florals. So, yeah, let's get started. So anytime that you want anything to spill off of the side of this mantle or a table, like a sweetheart table is a really popular look right now to kind of have flowers spilling over the edge, um, you're going to want to use a couple, there's a couple different ways of doing it. Um, you want to have some sort of hook that you can use as like your base structure. So right now we're using a command hook, um, which will just affix right here to the edge. Um, you can either use floral foam um, garlands like this. It's a cylindrical foam that you would just kind of like hook into the garland and it can just kind of like hang off. And then you'll, this would be soaked ahead of time. Um, it's a pretty good hydration source for the flowers. And then you'll just kind of build it off of that. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be using um, a tube of chicken wire, which I'll do pretty much the same effect. Kind of just hook it right to this command hook, let it drape down. And since the flowers really only need to stay for the, um, for like the ceremony or type of event, they are not gonna be in water, um, but I can fill it with my greenery, kind of have it spill down and kind of give it a really beautiful gardeny wild look. Um, so what you'll do, is make sure that the surface is clean, not drop anything, and you'll just stick your command hook right to the edge. And then I'm just gonna hook my chicken wire right to that, and it's gonna stay secure so I can start building off of that. Um, for my side of the mantle today, I'm gonna be working with foraged branch, so this is uh, flowering spring branch 
I believe it's pear, right? It's pear. <laughs> um, so anytime you're working with any type of heavy branch material, there's a couple things that you need to keep in mind. The foam will hold the branch, um, but you're gonna wanna make sure that any type of branch, you cut at an angle. If you cut the stem right across the bottom, it's going to make it harder to hold in the foam. Cutting it at an angle or even opening up the surface area a little bit more by cutting up the center of the branch, like this, is gonna open up the capillaries with inside the branch itself and making sure that nothing's wilting. Um, it just helps the branch and the leaves to stay fresh while letting them drink a little bit more easier. It's also gonna make it slightly easier to hold in your foam. Um, anytime that I'm doing something like this, I want to not go all the way back. Um, I want to try to angle my branch forward into the foam. The reason I do that is because if I start with everything super in the back of the cage itself, as I start working, I potentially could have the issue of everything tilting forward and falling off. So you wanna make sure that the weight is evenly distributed. Um, so I'm actually angling my stem forward into the foam, so that way my branch is gonna hold. And with anything like this, you want to kind of just let it be really free form and have fun with it. While Jess is starting on her form, I'm gonna go ahead and green out the ocean centerpiece. Since we have such a spilling cascade, high-low situation on this side of the mantle, I wanna mimic that a little bit with this side, but it's gonna be a lot less dramatic. Um, but I, do, I am gonna have a little bit going high and some just coming out of the pouch, but I'm not gonna use any chicken wire or anything, so it'll be a smaller version of what Jess is doing. To really help your kind of spill look more naturalized too, you're gonna to want some of your greenery to kind of flow with the shape that you already have with your chicken wire. So I'm using kind of some of the more curved, smaller branches to kind of um, help me create kind of that shape. Um, so it's gonna look really natural, almost as if it was growing in nature. So one of the greens too that I love working with um, pretty much in general is Italian Rescus. The stems can at times be two to three feet long. Um, I also really love kind of the graceful curve that it has. Um, it really helps in any type of kind of larger centerpiece or urn or arch arrangement. Like this is my go-to greenery. It can essentially not need to be in water. It'll still stay this nice green color. Um, it's super hardy, can withstand pretty high temps, um, so it's like one of my favorites to work with. So this is going to be kind of what I am going to start feeding up through my chicken wire to create kind of that spilling effect. And one of the nice things too is because it's so long, you can cut it up into sections right at the joint between leaves, and that way it's going to give you a lot to work with. So to kind of help it look a little bit more naturalized, as if everything's a cohesive um, piece, even if you start to separate them. For this, we're starting to add a little bit of this flowering branch to the runner that Callie already made, just so it looks like a, it's almost one cohesive arrangement and it wasn't made separately. I've also added a little bit to the ocean pouch. 
And I was a little worried with that woody stem, how that would work in the ocean, but it's actually holding really well. Anytime you're adding greenery or stems to kind of this hanging structure, you want to try to make sure that you're going through at least a few of the webs, um, the openings of the chicken wire itself. This is going to make sure that everything kind of stays secure, um, especially you want stems to start crossing over one another. As they do that inside the chicken wire tube that you've made, the stems will start creating their own grid, which is essentially becoming chicken wire inside chicken wire. Um, and this is going to kind of help everything hold in place, um, especially when you start to go add in your blooms at the end. So as I talked about before, one of the things doing anything like this that you want to keep in mind is that right now a lot of my weight is coming forward. So I really want to be mindful of that. Um, so I'm going to start adding a little bit more greenery, even if it's lower and it's not going to be seen to the back, um, just to make sure that nothing tips forward, nothing falls. Um, if you don't want to use any greenery to do that, you can take um, any type of like a part of a brick, um, any type of like heavy structure and just place it right back on the foam cage itself. That's going to create a weight to help stabilize your arrangement. It'll really make sure that nothing's going to go anywhere during the ceremony reception. Even if people are moving around or brushing past it, especially if you're using something like this as like a photo booth wall, um, and people are, might be bumping up against it. You really want to make sure that all of your mechanics are secure. Um, so that way nothing happens where disaster strikes and you might run into some sort of lawsuit because not good. <laughs> Even if they're your friend. <laughs> So all the greenery that I've added so far to this is really hardy. It's going to hold up well outside of water. Any type of more tender greenery like this sword fern, I will not put in here. Um, if you were to go with leather leaf fern, that would definitely be a hardier greenery that you could probably use that won't shrivel up. Um, but for a tender greenery like sword fern, I definitely want to make sure that that's in my foam. With carnations, if they're not as big as you want them to be, my favorite thing is that you can just smash them with your hands. It doesn't hurt them, it doesn't make them die sooner. They just open up really easily. With the mini green carnation, or carnations, hydrangea, um, those are typically like a much hardier version of hydrangea than if you were to work with like a larger white um, or blue or pink. Um, what I really like doing um, with hydrangea to make them last a little bit longer is kind of like what I did with my larger branching stems is when I cut it, I'll actually make a slit right up the center. Hydrangea have, um, what you can see is a kind of woody center that's this fibrous um, white material. That's how the uh, stem drinks in itself. So if you open that up more to floral foam or even in your arrangements where it's drinking directly from water, that'll help to make it last a little bit longer. So stock is a great flower that um, will hold up out of water. So this is kind of like my more linear um, flower that I'm adding to my chicken wire spill. I'm definitely making sure that I'm kind of crisscrossing my stems inside my chicken wire to hold it in place. Again, I'm working in smaller groups. 
Um, anytime that you group flowers together, um, it makes it more impactful and less kind of spotted out. Um, so definitely like having like a nice, beautiful clump of the stock here. I might have another smaller clump that's a little bit tighter here is definitely going to kind of help with my um, intentional um, placement of flowers. So I left the stems of these ones down here uh, slightly longer because I needed them to um, kind of go up through the center of the chicken wire. These ones I'm cutting down a little bit shorter because I want them to kind of just tuck in. And you do need to be kind of gentle, like don't go in super ham hocked, but um, you want to make sure that you're not like really moving anything, but be intentional. Okay, I've pretty much finished the ocean pouch centerpiece or mantelpiece, and now I'm gonna go in to the already made centerpiece, and I'm gonna try to make it match these a little bit more, so I'll add a bit of sword fern and maybe some Italian ruscus and some elements to tie it all together as one, one large arrangement. Carnations too are a really hardy flower that will definitely hold up out of water. So I'm gonna start adding those to some of my spill. With any type of like more naturalized arrangement, you definitely wanna play with the height of flowers. So some things I'm gonna leave a little bit longer, other things I'm um, gonna tuck down a little bit further. Um, that way it's gonna really have that natural garden-y look that I'm going for. One of the things that I learned too um, when I was first starting out is anytime I'm making an arrangement like this that's mimicking a garden, there's always, especially if a garden's not super manicured, like one flower that's gonna be like kind of wild and like crazy. So it's really fun and adds a little bit of whimsy if you kind of just have like a flower that's off on its own, um, maybe a little bit taller than the others. Like even if I were to just do one up here. You know, it just kind of makes it so it looks more naturalized and that, you know, it's growing right up out of the mantle. On that note, I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> my finished arrangement. What do you think, Beth? Like yeah, I like that. I'll, I'll do the other side because you have. Yeah, and then maybe if you had like a piece of fern coming out, just to kind of like Teamwork. wing off. <laughs> okay, I've stepped back and looked at everything, and I think the two smaller arrangements look good, and I don't really want to add too much or get too heavy-handed with it. So I'm done with these two, and I'm going to leave Jess to work her magic now. So I'm kind of just, as I'm adding in my roses to kind of my spill here, I'm just kind of almost like as I cut my stem, wiggling it up through the chicken wire. Um, I want to make sure it's secure before I let it go. Um, if it falls, it's like not the biggest deal in the world. You just kind of need to find a different spot where it's going to start crisscrossing with other stems to hold it in place. And again, you don't want to forget about that back there. Um, I want to make sure that I'm still adding stems to this back area to secure and kind of help add in weight. So nothing kind of pops out or falls forward. I'm going to go with some of these spray roses, which are so beautiful. What's nice about these two is that you can kind of cut them up into little pieces. Because they kind of have multiple buds on each stem, it creates like a great way also um, to feed other flowers through them. Um, it's kind of like it's you're creating your own little grid just by using this one stem. Especially like you can see this one's a really great one. So I'm actually going to cut it in half.
<laughs> it fell. Yeah. It didn't hit the ground, but it started to tip. So we used a weight. So we were like, should we edit it out or should we leave it in? But yeah, it's done. It's done. And that's it. <laughs>